So in this video, we are gonna be chatting about growth charts. We're gonna talk about what is a growth chart, how they were developed, like the WHO versus the CDC growth charts, how your providers use them in clinical practice, and basically what they mean to you as a parent. What is a growth chart? Well, here's what they look like. Um, we have different growth charts for different ages. So we have one set of growth chart for zero to two years, and then we have another set of growth charts for two to 20 years. So growth charts look at your child's weight or their length or their height or their head circumference according to their age. And they also look at your child's weight according to their height or their length. And so there's a difference there. So one, we're comparing things to other kids their age, which is like the weight for age, height for age, or head circumference for age. And then the weight for length or the BMI for age, for or BMI for age for any kids above two years old, don't just look at how much they weigh for compared to other kids their age or how tall they are compared to other kids their age. Those ones look at the proportionality. So how much do they weigh compared to how tall they are? So if we're just looking at like weight for age or we're just looking at a child's weight on their growth chart, it doesn't take into account how tall they are. So it's really, really important to not put too much clout into just like a weight growth chart because it doesn't really tell us a bunch. In addition, growth charts also don't tell us a bunch if there's just one point on the growth chart. What your providers will use is a trend, so a history. We wanna see how your child is changing over time and are there any red flags that might make us concerned for underlying medical conditions. So that's how your providers should be using the growth charts. Um, so, the, uh, there's two sets of growth charts. We have one from the World Health Organization and one from the CDC. So we use the World Health Organization growth charts, which are, I'm gonna show you them right here, if I can get them. So they are, this is what they look like. One for boys, one for girls. Um, and we use these for ages zero to two. So providers should always be using the WHO or the World Health Organization growth charts for zero to two. And we use this versus the CDC data for this age because the WHO data is more thorough, it's from a larger data set, and isn't as affected by confounding variables as the CDC data is for this age. However, um, CDC charts are used for after two years because um, we switched to standing for length, so after your child is two, we're gonna measure their height standing versus laying down on a length board or like an exam table. Um, and then after two years, the quality of the World Health Organization data is really similar to the quality of the CDC data. And the CDC data extends to 20 years, whereas the World Health Organization only extends to five years. So that's why we use the World Health Organization or the WHO growth charts for zero to two. And we use the CDC growth chart, which is what these are right here in my hand for two to 20. So these charts are the body mass index um, percentiles for age. So we have one for boys and one for girls. So what do the plots mean? Like let's say your provider plots your child on the growth chart. So what they're going to do, for example, I'm holding the boys BMI for age growth chart. So your provider is going to calculate your child's BMI and they are going to plot it along this line and then they're gonna look at how old they are and they're gonna find where those points intersect. And that's gonna tell us your child's BMI percentile. So let's say your child is at the 40th percentile for BMI. That means out of 100 children, um, they're the 40th in line for BMI. So there will be 39 with a lower BMI and there will be 60 with a higher BMI. So they're right at the number 40 spot in line. That's what the percentile means. Um, so, however, we, um, there's a lot of things to consider. You know, growth charts aren't a be all end all. They're just one data point in your child's health. So let's talk about this BMI 
growth chart for a second. BMI is in kids is really different from BMI for adults. So BMI for adults is just like a simple equation. And then we're categorized into categories that like public health professionals use to assess population health, which we can make a whole critique on that. That will be in a different video, but it is what it is. That's what we use right now. Um, but numbers are different from kids versus adults. What would be classified as like the overweight or obese category in um, adults might not be that in kids and vice versa. So we expect body fat and muscle to change with age and this is really, really normal. So that's why we don't just look at the number, the BMI number, we have to plot it for their age because as you can see, BMI changes over time and what is considered in the like average range will change over time as your child grows. Um, However, BMI or a growth chart is not the number one indicator of health for a child. When we look at a growth chart, like as a dietitian, I always plot my patients on the growth chart, or almost always, but that isn't something that I use to make like immediate clinical decisions. What that tells me is, are there red flags that we need to be looking out for? So for example, if your child is at a higher BMI, and starts to drop over time, I might be concerned about like an underlying medical condition or food insecurity or another reason why your child is consuming like less food than they were before or maybe they're still consuming the same amount of food but they're having malabsorption issues and so again that's a that's a red flag for a medical condition so the bmi is a tool to help us discover more about your child it's not like something that we should be using to label a child um, and we also know that there are other things that are much more indicative of health in a child um, than just BMI alone like we should really be paying attention to eating behaviors for example those are so important so if you ever go to an appointment with your, with your provider and you talk about BMI but you don't talk about eating behaviors like that's a red flag to me because if, if a provider is concerned about a high or a low BMI we should be talking about eating behaviors and digging more into that versus just you know like giving a, a lecture on BMI alone so BMI is a tool we use it in the clinical setting um, but it's just that it's just a tool it's not a label for your child um, in addition this is really kind of a, a BMI was originally developed as a population level surveillance tool not as a individual clinical decision making tool so Kind of keep that in mind however growth charts are really important for children because we do want to see them growing um, along their curve over time so children can be healthy at the high percentiles they can be healthy at the low percentiles they can have medical conditions and be really struggling at the high percentiles they can have medical decision conditions and be really struggling at the low percentiles um, someone has to be at both ends just because your child is in the third percentile doesn't mean they're unhealthy just because your child is in the 97th percentile doesn't mean they're unhealthy there's lots of things that contribute to weight and bmi in children including nutrition physical activity genetics medical conditions socioeconomic status food accessibility so again grow charts are a single tool there's so much more to your child's health than just their growth chart um, so i'm going to kind of summarize here so if a child is 85th percentile for height or weight or bmi this means that they're taller or um, way more or have a larger small larger bmi than 84 out of 100 children their same age out of a random sample in the u.s population bmi numbers and categories for adults do not apply to kids growth charts can tell dietitians and doctors where to look for more information but they are not a label for your child they're a tool or a flag that tells us where we need to look for or where we need to dig a little bit there's lots of factors that include uh, that in fact impact weight several of which you as a parent have no control over and while growth charts are a useful tool they're only one piece of the puzzle so keep that in mind so that's it for the growth chart.